Thank you very much, first of all, um, to this kind invitation. We, I'm honored to be here with you tonight. I present the work of C++ work and research of C++ architects uh, from uh, the last uh, nearly 20 years of uh, um, practice. Um, during the past uh, three decades, uh, we have assisted uh, at a strong property development and uh, urban expansion, driven uh, mainly by the financial power, uh, to increase uh, the GDP without any real critical concern in most of times from architects uh, about the real necessities and demands uh, and uh, uh, most important about the environmental impact of these operations. With some provocation, we can state uh, that our discipline has moved from theory to construction at any cost. Now that the economic crisis strikes, and uh, at least in uh, Europe uh, um, and the Western world in, for some points, uh, architects are pushed to rethink the whole of the process uh, they are involved uh, uh, in. If before questions were what and how, now we need to add a more complex system of questions. Why, where, who, and when. Um, so this means uh, uh, that uh, in the immediate uh, future, this complexity and uh, 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 interest uh, in, um, in this more complexity will uh, driven the attention of, uh, of uh, our work into uh, rezoning, redevelopment, reuse, transformation, addition, more than just being interested substantially in building the new. And that's very important for us because this idea of stratification, of working on what's existing and reshaping what is existing, there's always a context we have to work with, means questioning the boundaries of our discipline, scales, sites are not given things. We have to reimagine them each time we work means mapping the potential of contexts with the, the aim of not having an imposing action, a project that we add imposingly on, on the context, but projects which are one moment of this process of transformation, so they themselves have an open ended. And it means also some sobriety right? Some, the idea that uh, we are more than authors, kind of translators. We like to define ourselves like translators of the context because we are one, uh, we invent in some way uh, a language which takes the context, which bridges the context from dif between different times. Um, and uh, we have to say thank you, Italy, because uh, uh, the um, difficulty of working in this country, in fact, have prepared us to the crisis in some way, if you look at it positively and not complaining, as we are very well used to do, right? Um, I don't want to complain. I could say that uh, in Italy we have been, uh, you know, uh, borrowing archistars from abroad just in the aim of allowing more volume. I could say that engineering companies uh, uh, are those who make the projects and design of what are considered functional buildings such as hospitals or parking lots or even the more sensitive school buildings. I could say that architects are allowed to marginal interventions uh, where th when then the private clients finish the project by themselves through general contractors. But I am uh, not interested in telling or stressing these things. In some way, 
um, this uh, is uh, a way of training uh, architects and prepare them to more diff always very difficult condition to find your own project uh, in each specific intervention you are giving and working uh, in. Uh, our story starts here in Venice, a landscape of the Venetian lagoon an instable environment, constantly undergoing a process of writing and erasure, erosion of the territory through opposite forces, uh, nature and the human beings who want to rewrite every moment through tide this condition. Um, here you can see some images, right? The idea that uh, um, we, uh, in Venice, uh, uh, human beings have decided uh, uh, to uh, make uh, strong boundaries between earth and water. You can see this in this picture with this fundamenta which have a white line uh, and determine that. And then this is uh, kind of ridiculized just by the high tide or the elevations with the fog. They are always merging with the landscape. Or uh, the um, octagons, these are military defense elements, but just a breath on the lagoon on, of the wind makes that boundaries uh, uh, not very well defined. Uh, there, in Venice, from this uh, uh, condition, contextual condition, we have learned the idea to substitute uh, the uh, idea of uh, design, of action, as in imposing action, with that of potentiality. It's a key word, potentials, uh, in Venice. It is well known that Hen Venice has always been resistant to those actions. We can imagine, you know, they, they, the, the projects are very, very well known architects from Palladio to Le Corbusier, right, were just uh, refused to uh, be able to um, build there. Um, Manfredo Toffuri in uh, his books, uh, Venice and the Renaissance, uh, says that Venice uh, is a problem for, moder for the moderns, fascinated by a crystallized continuity which has been mistaken for banal organic unity, perhaps to be regained. They cannot tolerate the challenge that Venice hurls to them, and they multiply their violent and faithful attempts with sadistic traits that are being barely hidden beneath the mask of the phrases like respectful project, the past as a friend, a new caprice, masks of a mummification of ephemeral revitalization. So Tafuri is launching us a provocation. How do you build in Venice without being, uh, you know, uh, how does he, what, what does he say, a respectful, a, a false respectful project. So we accepted in some way this provocation, looking at what is invisible in Venice. Uh, for example, at all scales of the city and the landscape. For example, uh, this is a beautiful to me picture of the defense system chains laying, laying invisibly inside the canals, uh, which are potentially defensions when, when and if there is an enemy. Or the idea of not uh, conquering other places, but uh, tidying a net of knots of commercial conditions, a very modern economical concept, right? or to the last detail of construction, where the facades of the palace are not linked to the structural walls because they are allowed to move, uh, one part, uh, each part is allowed to move from the other due to subsidence or whatever. Um, this uh, uh, is uh, uh, the idea of potential, very much more belonging to the Eastern culture than to the Western, as uh, 
beautifully explained in Francois Julien's uh, book, The Treaties of Efficacy, uh, where he says that the we, in the Western culture, the action is always an aim to perceive uh, and to be completed, while in the Western culture, Culture, in the Eastern culture, sorry, um, uh, the, um, the action is the exploitation of the potentials uh, uh, of uh, uh, the site. Uh, so uh, when we started working uh, to the 325 hectares of uh, Santerasmo Island in the Venice Lagoon, we started uh, mapping uh, uh, the island itself, but uh, the broader context of the lagoon. This is a way we proceed, mapping different layers uh, of uh, uh, connections, of historical elements, of uh, natural elements, different elements. For example, the fortification nets was one of the most important because uh, in Santerasma Santa Island was positioned in the um, openings uh, of uh, which link the lagoon to the sea and so that it, it, it was to understand the role of the island in the broader context of the lagoon. Uh, but also the materiality, the signs of the lagoon itself we mapped them, we took photos uh, uh, with the help of friends, photographers, we mapped them and uh, we started working then on the island. It, was, it is not really a then, it is uh, something which, uh, a process which cross sections uh, between different scales. For example, the evolution of the islands of the and, and the morphology, the structure of the agricultural systems, the relationship between land and water, the vegetation materials, which for us are materials of design as well as uh, the construction materials, the accessibilities which make the connection between the island and the lagoon itself, the inside circulation, to in some way find interferences and to draw what we call the map of potentials. The map of potentials uh, is, uh, <coughs> in some way, it, it reveals uh, the way where we uh, are, uh, uh, in some way, allowed uh, to act, to transform. Where the transformation is not what I think uh, it's necessary, but what is in equilibrium between uh, a design act and uh, the asking of what is inside uh, the concept. And this, when, uh, when uh, we start uh, with, uh, when we have this map of potentials, we like to play with this uh, word, the adapter. I titled uh, this lecture, Scape Adapters, if you have seen at the beginning. The adapter uh, is uh, the physical configuration of a translation. We are translators of the context, and it's, it is made of two syllabi, ad and apt. Apt is, uh, means an element in intercultural contact, and this is what we think the project should be between what is there and what is the future, right? So an intercultural intercultural and time contact. It is a soft technology which permits the dialogue and it allows uh, connections and creates understanding but preserving the identity of uh, the system. And then there's this word add, which is obviously adding something to this context, but it has also the idea of advertisement, of communication, of telling something, so of manipulating in some way something. So the adapters can be uh, temporary adapters. This is the project uh, of a, a temporary project uh, of the entrance of the 60th uh, International Film Festival where uh, we were asked uh, mm, to design that threshold, uh, the entrance of the actors. Uh, 
Some of them were very famous, uh, and so they liked to stay with the people which were there, there to upload them. Some others were not. So we designed, we manipulated the ground, the ground and uh, designed this uh, new carpet, or what we called, we called it, uh, how we called it, uh, the wave, like, you know, the wave which um, arrives on the beach uh, and uh, it, it explodes uh, and then uh, it's finished, right? It's the, end, the arrival of these actors. Um, and uh, some of them could play with the people where we, who were kept uh, aside from, the, from exactly this uh, manipulation of the soil and some of them entered uh, directly. This, uh, allowed us to create um, a very interesting, oh well, this place were, was also used by the people when the film festival was uh, finished for a period or when there were not films on. So it was something that also the community shared. This was a very a uh, new uh, landscape that was created with these uh, six uh, centimeters uh, thick uh, uh, columns. Uh, and uh, we had the honor of Woody Allen opening uh, the mm, festival. But let's uh, go to, you know, more uh, uh, to, to, to Santerasmo Island again. And, uh, uh, and to this idea of the uh, adapters. So we decided and guided uh, the design where the uh, nodes of this island should be uh, put. This was, uh, in fact, uh, this was uh, the first uh, uh, project for which we were called to work in Santerasmo. And then through this process of uh, potentials uh, of layering, etc. we had uh, the whole uh, task of designing uh, all the infrastructures of the island and, uh, um, and the buildings that which I will show today. So as you have seen, the circulation of the water had, was interrupted. We re-excavated the canals. This, is very this was very important uh, to re-establish the equilibrium, the physical equilibrium of that part uh, uh, of uh, the island, but uh, substantially we uh, discovered that uh, if we were to restore the 19th century uh, tower on, in that island, uh, that was not possible to make it a contemporary museum because you had a lot of systems of uh, uh, elements like, for example, what we call the dirty functions, uh, the toilets, uh, uh, which are necessary but couldn't fit inside that tower with, without destroying uh, the atmosphere, the DNA of that tower. So we added uh, this, what we call this adapter, which is uh, a contemporary embankment which uh, serves uh, the island, as a, uh, the, the tower, as a service uh, building, we use wood for that uh, um, purpose because uh, uh, timber uh, is uh, the material of temporality, the material of support. Through the map of potential, we discovered that timber is not only the foundation material of the whole island, but is uh, the material of additions of uh, agricultural, uh, uh, agricultural buildings added to the main buildings, to the cabanas, uh, the cover docks, uh, <coughs> or um, many other you know, service functions have uh, the use of this material. And that's why we chose it. And this idea of the adapter goes to the last detail of construction because then we uh, link the contemporary embankment uh, to the tower with this uh, element which we call, which is underground and we call the uh, kind of an umbilical cord of energy. And then we had just two layers, a horizontal one and a vertical one totally detached 
from the main structures uh, of uh, uh, the walls without touching uh, the main structures. It's very beautiful because these walls are from one meter to two meter thick uh, walls. We repair them. I love this idea of repairing in architecture, which means uh, taking care to have also a shelter, right? So it's kind of working with architecture but with the aim of having a repair back from architecture. So we map uh, all the walls um, to, to leave them, uh, to leave in the condition they are as much as possible, and we add this <coughs> horizontal and uh, layer which contains all the systems, it's very thin, uh, the systems which allow this uh, tower to be bridged to contemporary. These are some pictures uh, of the inside of the museum. And this is uh, a, a vertical uh, wood and glass made uh, element which uh, um, allows uh, the uh, fire uh, protection and uh, uh, the lighting uh, in the first floor. This is the inside courtyard when we didn't have uh, the archive drawings uh, and we didn't know how to act. We worked adding uh, those punctual elements which gave uh, the idea of uh, uh, the whole uh, of uh, the building. Another picture. Adapters uh, are also the way, uh, so uh, interviewing uh, the people in uh, Santerasmo and working uh, with them, we um, uh, got to know, knew, know that uh, um, the, one of the most important things which was lacking there uh, was uh, the connection with the broader scale of uh, the lagoon. Um, after the 1966 high tide, the islands were surrounded by walls uh, to protect them from high tide. But uh, this was not sufficient because uh, the inhabitants did that and that was fascinating to us, right? It's more important to be connected uh, with the broader landscape than uh, to, you know, to be protected. So. Uh, this is how we mapped the process of, uh, you know, uh, little by little the, wa the water was not no more a friend but became in some way an enemy. So we started to look at this uh, one, one of the parts of this map of potentials and uh, uh, to know which were the knots, the, the important moments uh, where this connection with the, the lagoon and with the broader system of infrastructure was to be done. And we acted uh, in different uh, ways. First of all, unfolding the edge in order to have a protection in, in one level and then uh, a, a possibility of uh, uh, connecting with lower levels uh, to the lagoon. For example, in this image you see that the protection is made uh, with the traditional materials of stone and bricks. Then we have a level here of interchanging of agricultural uh, uh, products. And then we added on the water floating a, a level, a layer of leisure, you know, with, where the kids can dive in the water or they can just uh, um, easily put a, a boat inside the water. Um, these are the um, nodes uh, where we acted, um, uh, and here you can see some of uh, the interventions uh, we realized. Working also on uh, the infrastructure system, uh, so for example, uh, uh, these streets were redesigned, confirmed uh, in San Erasmo, is a, there's a hybrid condition where there are cars also. And uh, the, 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 our intervention is just a line of bricks in this part. Maybe we have a bigger picture, I don't know. Um, a line of bricks which tells us that uh, that street is uh, uh, infrastructure with lighting, uh, with uh, sewing question, etc. 
and uh, a line of tamarix, uh, which is uh, the traditional uh, plant of uh, uh, the St. Erasmo Island. Here you see a series of intervention of uh, the unfolding of the edge, the excavation of the canals, uh, the addition of small uh, buildings which were lacking. This is a first aid point which was required by the people uh, loudly, right? Because they had to, uh, there, there was no place to recover somebody who was ill and to, to, to take them uh, to, 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 to have a repair before going uh, to the main hospital uh, uh, in, uh, in Venice. Uh, the reorganization of uh, circulation uh, with the addition of uh, uh, central connection. The island is very big. Yes, uh, here you can see the street I was talking uh, uh, about uh, uh, before. So very soft and uh, sometimes invisible interventions. Um, the last uh, uh, element I would like to talk to you about um, is uh, the water filtration plant. In fact, uh, this is a technological building inhabited by systems, right? And uh, when we were asked to design it, um, we looked uh, at uh, these uh, elements which are really fascinating, uh, which are big structures, walls, uh, waiting uh, in some way to be reused in time. The water filtration plant is here. This is a map which makes a kind of a summary of uh, all intervention in color. The position of the water filtration plant was near another Austrian battery. Um, so we decided to make of that, uh, of that part of the project uh, part of a larger landscape which was uh, to be a park. Uh, we uh, studied the question uh, and decided to uh, hidden and to hide under the ground all of those parts which were not necessarily uh, inspectioned. And so only a little part of the program was above the ground four one meter thick uh, concrete made walls uh, colored with the uh, earth of the island and uh, deactivated. That's the project. <coughs> to merge in the landscape of the island. Obviously, to gain uh, that simplicity there's uh, a strong detailing uh, work uh, beneath, uh, invisible work, right? You just see four one meter thick uh, walls. And I would like to introduce uh, this artist, which is very, it's a very inspirational for us. He's Lou Bolin. He painted uh, himself uh, with uh, the um, landscape, with the definition of the landscape he is inside, and then takes pictures uh, of uh, this uh, operation. Why this is fascinating? Because there's uh, a very uh, interesting and uh, advanced technological way to uh, just uh, make uh, a simple act, to, to make himself uh, an interference uh, of, uh, um, of the context. He works uh, in Venice. This is a project which is called Hide and Seek. And in some way, it's what uh, uh, we would like to do with uh, some of our projects. There's another uh, important topic here, which is uh, uh, start uh, a process uh, which is what time does to surfaces, uh, which is uh, incept uh, the erasure of uh, materiality. I really find uh, a lot of uh, connections uh, between these pictures uh, where the deactivated concrete doesn't, uh, it's not something that you know how it will uh, come out uh, when you take uh, off uh, the form and just wash it strongly um, over. And this picture where the 
time uh, acted uh, naturally on uh, uh, the surfaces uh, of uh, uh, the tower. This idea of uh, um, turning uh, a technological uh, uh, object uh, uh, into a landscape design, happened, we happen to work with this idea also with uh, another filtration plant in Konza, um, briefly, there were a lot of uh, disconnected uh, elements uh, where which we tried uh, usually conventionally looking at the system. We tried to gather them together. It was uh, office buildings uh, and then very specific functions that are necessary for, uh, for the filtration. And uh, just uh, working uh, with uh, the manipulation and the folding and unfolding of the ground, we created uh, this uh, new landscape where uh, uh, the technological parts are part uh, of uh, uh, this modification of, uh, of the ground, deformation of the ground, and uh, there's uh, only one emerging uh, element, uh, uh, which is which the surface of which is treated uh, as reflective uh, of the landscape uh, itself. So it doubles this uh, uh, idea. Going back to the idea of uh, uh, the adapter, um, I would like to present you a very small project. So we are in a totally different scale. We are in, inside the Arsenale of Venice. And this was the building. It was to become uh, the uh, center of uh, uh, control of uh, uh, the uh, openings uh, of uh, when the Mose project will be com completed. Um, this is the final project, but it's not this that I would like to talk about but uh, this uh, small object. This is uh, the adapter. It's the element uh, which uh, gathers together all uh, the uh, dirty functions, as I told, to make uh, that uh, uh, pavilion as uh, a free space. As it was, uh, the pavilions in the Arsenale of Venice uh, were free spaces uh, uh, occupied by the boats uh, uh, in uh, uh, construction. We questioned the, the codes which didn't allow us uh, normally to dig something underground in Venice. That's not allowed by the codes, but this was a, a listed monument, and so that was a good occasion of rediscussing in some way if that code was fitting or not. So as the computers uh, have no feelings for the moment, uh, they need uh, uh, temperature control and humidity control, that the underground controlled uh, space was in fact the perfect moment and the perfect space to uh, house them whether allowing the upper space to be free to other uh, function, to be activated uh, from other functions, which could be offices or uh, it was space at disposal. So this is uh, what we call the relict in uh, Corten steel. This is uh, the stair which uh, uh, goes uh, uh, to the underground space. This is another picture. And um, here we introduced uh, uh, another topic. Uh, we are in Venice, uh, and uh, there's this layer of reflection which guides us uh, in the city, right? So it's the way water is uh, uh, fractioned in small pieces. Another very interesting artist, uh, Miyako, uh, takes pictures uh, of uh, her mother's body and uh, underwear just before she dies. And what I am uh, uh, really fascinated about uh, is the fact that you don't see real differences between these two elements, right? Though one is uh, the stratification of the story of the skin of, uh, of her mother, and the other one is uh, a new element which is added to the body. 
So when we uh, wanted uh, to put this, to, to make this building uh, become energy sufficient, uh, we worked uh, with uh, the um, Preservation Monument Institution and uh, 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 substituted uh, a part of the roof uh, with a glazed one, where we added uh, a new layer of uh, photovoltaic cells, uh, which are both energy producers and bristle ales. And they act uh, with the layers of the building, the bricks, uh, the wood, the textures of the building, uh, as uh, a contemporary layer, but working uh, with the same uh, atmosphere or uh, uh, mm, in some way uh, making uh, a, a, a stronger this idea of light changing every moment, uh, the atmosphere of the place. In the same way to allowing uh, spaces or the, the, the differentiation of spaces, but uh, leaving the idea of the whole, which was one of our first aims, uh, we designed uh, these uh, thin uh, wood-made uh, and uh, glazed uh, uh, structures um, uh, which divide the space but leave uh, the idea of, uh, uh, of the whole. Um, <coughs> and uh, a totally different scale. This is uh, um, the winner entering entry of uh, an international competition, uh, which we won with a huge group uh, of uh, people. Uh, the competition uh, was brief, uh, was that of uh, uh, restoring uh, the existing uh, uh, monuments, uh, uh, 19th century monuments of an ex-tobacco factory in Piazzale Roma in Venice. Um, this was the situation before, and uh, we went uh, uh, against, uh, in some way, the competition brief, uh, because uh, um, we didn't just restore the existing. There seemed to be no places to add something new, to add this adapter. In fact, there was a place which was this thin one. And Piazzale Roma is a very interesting place for us in Venice, one of the most interesting, um, because it's a hybrid place where all the flows uh, meet together, boats and trains and cars and pedestrians, right? It's the only moment where this is all together gathered. So that was a very interesting moment of being in uh, this uh, condition. This is our adapter. So. Uh, to uh, build this uh, uh, building, uh, we put the money that were uh, uh, to be uh, used for the parts uh, of the system which had to go under the ground to occupy the upper floors uh, of uh, uh, this building. So there, that was, uh, you know, if you don't have the money to do the things, uh, you can't do them and you have to find strategies uh, to find uh, uh, the money for what you think is correct for that uh, site. So I, this image is, uh, shows you that uh, this building was to be built in the first phase, and it was uh, the adapter which allowed uh, all the uh, uh, systems to work, also for uh, bridging uh, the existing uh, elements, uh, buildings uh, to contemporary. This is the building and the space it occupies. We say that this is a complex adapter, adapter of uh, scales, uh, typologies, uh, um, programs uh, and time, scales. In Piazzale Roma, the situation is very interesting for us, also because there, are the, there is the compresence of uh, very different scales. The small scale, uh, these sections show you very well this thing. The small scales uh, of the housing systems, the bigger scales uh, of the parking lots uh, or of the industrial uh, uh, elements. So this uh, thin element was to occupy uh, the space at disposal, bridging uh, and making a connection between the landscape of the port 
and uh, uh, the landscape of uh, Piazzale Roma. So becoming uh, uh, thinner in some point. An adapter of typologies, the way this uh, uh, condition around was uh, built, uh, was there, was a sequence uh, of what we call the Venetian thesas, uh, uh, two walls and a pitched roof. We just added an hour, another thesa, but then uh, how it is done in many places, we stretched it in length and height, and it became the building uh, that you see. You see, here you have the sequence of the thesis, and this is the last one of the sequence. It's not touching the ground. There's a cantilever, uh, which makes a, a kind of uh, an attract attraction of the pedestrian flows, because uh, while spreading energy to all the system, then it, it will capture the flows uh, to uh, give back the citizens uh, this part uh, of uh, reconquered part of the city. Now it's not working like that because uh, uh, all the rest of the tobacco factory is, is uh, on under construction, but this will act uh, in uh, uh, this way in the future as uh, a huge space with commercial uh, um, shops inside. And so people will enter from that and regain that part with which was closed for many times. Inside, in fact, uh, the space is uh, substantially void uh, and occupied, it's a seven story high spaces, um, illuminated from uh, the roof uh, with this uh, huge uh, uh, steel made stair which uh, connects to the first part of the building which ha is uh, occupied uh, by low court offices. These are some other pictures uh, of uh, the building. And this big uh, covered square to allow, in fact, uh, to uh, people uh, to gain uh, all this uh, uh, part of uh, the city. Um, how does it work as an adapter? Uh, the um, systems uh, are housed uh, in the roof, uh, but then they have to go down and spread uh, all around. So there's a one meter and 50 centimeter thick uh, facade, which serves uh, exactly that uh, purpose. Uh, it is this facade because uh, we couldn't uh, uh, put windows. It was a very much uh, narrow, the situation. And uh, it's, we just punctured the space with these thin windows. But this one meter uh, and 50 centimeters allow us also to capture the light in a special way in order to have uh, a place which changes uh, through light uh, every moment uh, of the day. So this is another uh, of our topic. An adapter of time. Again, we uh, chose uh, to use uh, pre-oxidated copper. Copper is the institutional uh, uh, mater material in Venice, uh, the um, one of them. Uh, the city is punctuated by vaults uh, which are uh, green and uh, we, the pre-oxidation process uh, starts this uh, idea of uh, time doing something to our facades. We don't know when and how that facade will turn the green that we see in this picture and I think that process uh, is uh, something which is part of the story and of the fascination of uh, the project itself. Working with public buildings, uh, uh, or, mm, well, we, I, I, I would like to stress this concept that despite uh, the real ownership of each building, we believe that each intervention we do in the city um, should push us to think uh, as uh, it as a, an adapter for the community. In some way, it makes uh, a connection, a difference. It incepts something. Um, 
we can also say that working mainly with public buildings, they, due to the fact that their use is substantially monofunctional usually, they are more private at the end than the private ones. Um, so focusing on uh, this uh, topic, uh, we started working on boundaries, borders, uh, and manipulating in some way the programs of uh, uh, some of our interventions. Uh, Benjamin, uh, Benjamin writes uh, about the entrance door, about the boundary, that where you can it des describes it like that, where you can stand and you can also sit, not just children, but also women too, have their place in the threshold of the house, in close contact with the land, its traditions, and perhaps its deities. The chair outside the door is already a sign of human innovation. So, this means uh, that a privately owned uh, space can be turned into uh, something else. It was the case uh, of uh, uh, this uh, student housing uh, in Florence. Uh, we are inside uh, Leon Creer's master plan, a very strong and defined master plan where uh, we were not allowed to do anything vertical, uh, windows, uh, use some materials which were wood uh, and concrete only if uh, uh, cast in place. Uh, so this was the plot. So we decided to interrupt the boundary, which was closed, and in some way create a fracture. And that fracture was uh, the public space, a huge entrance which, uh, where we, we, a part of it was covered. Um, uh, in, the, in front of us, uh, there was uh, uh, the university designed by Natalini with uh, a very narrow porch where the students were not, uh, you know, happily enjoying uh, the covered space. So this square was for everybody, for the city around. And where we put the two entrances, in fact, so not on the boundary, but inside this uh, uh, space, uh, where uh, uh, we designed a, a public canteen, and we convinced uh, our client uh, that uh, the public spaces of the student housing were to be open to everybody, and not just to the people living in that place. So very rough materials, uh, concrete, uh, durable though, which uh, could be used by uh, everybody. This is a picture of the canteen and the entrance hall would uh, take you to an inside courtyard where all the studying spaces uh, are looked. Um, in fact, looking at uh, Florence, uh, we saw uh, and we noticed uh, and studying that it, the situation was very different from Venice. While in Venice, uh, the windows are holes and they perfectly design the void spaces of the city. When you walk uh, or, you s or, or you are in a boat in the, bi in the Grand Canal, you can perfectly understand uh, where is the, the big salone or the lateral spaces? In Florence, everything was on the outside edge. Also, the, the, this um, uh, closing of the windows, uh, while in Venice we're in the inside, marking the hole, in Florence we're on the outside, marking the edge of the building. So that is the concept of the project, because we are in that concept. A facade, uh, wood-made facade, that should have been uh, uh, real wood to, be, to mature, but the client uh, was suspicious of that, uh, and so we had to use uh, a certified wood, and uh, the Prodema wood, we are not absolutely happy of that choice, but uh, the aim of being uh, on the edge was perceived. 
So this uh, uh, facade hides uh, the uh, closing, the, sh the, the, the shadows of uh, uh, the places where the students uh, live and leaves uh, a uh, space uh, for uh, the common uh, uh, places. Um, Career master plan uh, didn't uh, wanted uh, obliged uh, at uh, some point pitch the roof, but uh, he didn't uh, tell us uh, if the roof was to be uh, with uh, the inclination on uh, the road on, on or inside the courtyard. So we just uh, turned the section the other side and uh, we obtained that uh, very uh, linear facade, which allows us exactly through this, uh, uh, through this um, inclined uh, roof uh, to have uh, a light uh, which comes, uh, which filters, uh, and we put all the systems uh, in this space uh, between uh, the, the, um, the floor and uh, the roof itself. In some other cases, the adapter is a lake, for example. This is a urban uh, uh, master plan uh, where uh, uh, we were asked to build uh, two towers, uh, and uh, we didn't. Uh, we convinced our clients, this is a private client, uh, of two things. First of all, that the scale of the towers was uh, wrong in Pordenone, and uh, that he would have not uh, sold anything, and that was. Uh, the tower was built uh, uh, near our project, uh, and, uh, and the developer didn't uh, sell anything. And uh, uh, we designed uh, a softer uh, housing complex, uh, and he was happy. You know, developers are happy when they sell all their uh, flats. But uh, for us, uh, this was uh, a uh, way of connecting uh, two different parts of the city with uh, two different levels uh, to give a role uh, again to this small lake, which became a part uh, of the public space. In fact, uh, the lake w is a privately owned lake, but <coughs> uh, to grant security and to open it up to the community, we uh, invented this gate, which is uh, closed in the at night and open in the morning. We designed uh, uh, a bridge and uh, the lighting which goes in the water in order to have uh, the possibility of uh, connecting these two levels uh, uh, of the city. To look again from the other side to the beautiful San Giorgio Tower, and these are a simple scenography for uh, this, uh, which is the important thing for us, which is uh, the urban uh, part uh, of the project. Designing uh, small places where you can sit and stay, uh, incepting the possibility that you can use uh, maybe a small lake, uh, a small uh, boat in this lake. And that is uh, happening right now. In uh, this master plan in Bassano, which was recently approved, uh, the, this is, this is um, a winning entry, an entry of a competition. A huge place um, uh, inside the railway station, which is here. There was an old master plan by Portoghese, uh, which uh, wasn't accepted by, accepted by the community. What we did uh, is uh, layering again the uh, landscape and uh, the potential which uh, came out, uh, which was there. In fact, we didn't do anything. It was there. Was that uh, uh, this project was done together with land, uh, the landscape uh, firm, to connect uh, the three beautiful uh, squares, uh, which are part of uh, the medieval ring, uh, with another ring, uh, a more smart ring, uh, which is that uh, of 2020, four kilometers uh, of green, uh, we, where you will be guided not by something which is closed, uh, like the walls, but which is open by the green. 
we started, uh, and this was the first part of this green loop, uh, a bike path, a, a, a frame, a shelter which protected from the noise uh, of the railway, which is uh, here. A big green room waiting for, uh, uh, to be activated, uh, uh, in some way space at disposal for the city itself, and smaller spaces uh, uh, for uh, the community, for the people living there. For, uh, <coughs> so starting from uh, the landscape uh, and not from the buildings, uh, we naturally had uh, this uh, movement of the volumes, uh, which were, was uh, accepted, not, not blocks, on the ground, but just uh, moving uh, elements with uh, uh, the bike paths. Obviously, this is a master plan, and uh, uh, this was approved by the administration, and uh, the first part will start uh, uh, soon. Another condition, uh, a um, uh, parking lot um, to be built uh, at the entrance uh, of uh, the city of uh, Conegliano and some uh, social housing. Um, here we had uh, the uh, void space uh, of uh, an ex-military uh, Piazza d'Armi. And we wanted to preserve that because void space uh, is the most beautiful uh, uh, element at disposal that community have uh, to transform uh, the cities in the future. So we decided to pre propose an underground, uh, two levels of underground parking, uh, 16 meters uh, uh, of uh, structure, and lighted naturally to the second level uh, underground, and then uh, there were uh, uh, no money uh, to uh, finish uh, the square above. This is uh, uh, the construction phases, uh, which were uh, pretty interesting uh, spaces inside, because uh, before we built what we called the train, and then we added uh, the beams. And so, uh, but we didn't want that square to return to be a parking lot. So we just uh, uh, borrowed uh, some stones uh, from the river Piave nearby and uh, designed uh, this uh, uh, path uh, of uh, large made boards. Uh, now this is a place uh, where they do cultural events uh, or fairs, uh, which is a space uh, at uh, uh, disposal. And uh, the housing complex uh, uh, was compressed uh, near the military space uh, in addition to it, uh, mm, oh, the only emergent uh, volumes, volumes uh, in the square are these uh, 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 security exits, uh, which are concrete maids, uh, and they are dots uh, inside uh, uh, the square itself. To make the ticket office, uh, there was a building which was there and which was unused. So why to build a new building if you already have one? And so we reused that, uh, uh, just adding uh, a uh, glazed roof, which put you in connection with the, the uh, street and beautiful trees on the other side uh, of uh, uh, the road. And this is uh, the inside of uh, the ticket office, where we uh, cut this uh, uh, lighting uh, from uh, the roof. Um, housing in Milan. Uh, working uh, with housing is uh, substantially working uh, on a facade. Is it? Well, it is. But when uh, we, we had worked uh, with this topic uh, with uh, Fulvio Erace for the pavilion uh, of uh, the last Biennale of Architecture, and uh, when uh, imagining a facade, and the role of the window, in fact, uh, there is uh, this condition which is for us very interesting. A window was uh, a uh, very fixed element, vertical, through which you were connected uh, to the outside. Now a window is something that you take uh, with the, the iPhone, iPads, 
you are moving yourself, right? And not, uh, uh, it's no more something fixed. So this is why we designed this very big iPad in front of uh, this element. It's working on the idea of uh, the windows. This is a picture of, uh, you know, when you spray the models, then something happens. And it reminded us uh, that uh, what is interesting is what uh, these uh, windows make uh, of uh, the public space. So when we were asked to build uh, this uh, housing in, uh, in Cascina Merlata master plan, we disconnected two parts to create a kind of a urban space inside where the facade, to, to, because we were obviously, as usual, on the threshold of uh, uh, things. We were in a very interesting position. The park on one side, the massing on the other, right? And we wanted in some way this uh, uh, connection. Windows, which created a public space, just very simply and cheaply, right? Uh, another uh, important uh, topic uh, of uh, our work is that uh, we uh, try to preserve uh, a cost control for every project. And this is uh, responding in advance, uh, maybe to the crisis, and now we are very much uh, in some way uh, prepared to work with that. This uh, just changing of the colors of the facade creates a place where the center of it is not the window and how you move them, etc., but it's what happens here. So we manipulated the ground, we worked with the same materiality in order to create a urban door. Okay. And this is uh, a design uh, by Chinozuki, who, who was uh, the um, uh, head of this group of, pe of people. Um, a piece of uh, the Polyclinic Hospital in Milan. We won this competition with a huge group uh, where Stefano Boeri was one of it. Uh, uh, the office uh, ABDA, Camillo Botticini, also won with a tech hint here in Milan. Now the project has been recently approved, uh, so it will be built. Just two words about this project. Uh, uh, when you have, uh, these are the, the uh, lab and the offices of the morgue. So a very, very difficult condition. Um, offices uh, looking at uh, this uh, uh, beautiful uh, urban square. We didn't want uh, to have differences. And also at the same time, we had uh, the task of uh, being together with these people who are in a very difficult moment of their life. So we created another threshold. We took the green inside. And uh, this is a place uh, maybe where you can think or just sit, allowing people working with a similar condition also inside, looking at a beautifully designed uh, green space. Um, this is the last uh, topic I would like to introduce you to today. Uh, school buildings. It's a very uh, strong part of our research. We call them uh, society buildings uh, which build society, so community adapters. Uh, and it's very interesting exactly because they are uh, objects uh, of the city of the sprawl. They are small. They speak the same language uh, of uh, the dots of the city of the sprawl. So they have the same me measure, recognizable by the community. They can be colored because we are working with children. Eh? And, uh, um, you know, a colored dot in the gray city uh, of the sprawl. 
They are places where a multicultural experience happens naturally through the kids. They are spaces of potentials because usually they are used only for a small part of the day. And if you imagine ways of use them for a longer period, they can be potential spaces for different activities. Um, they are small interventions, so low cost in some way. And uh, if they are sustainable, sustainably thought, they can teach this uh, sustainability. A nursery school uh, in uh, Pederobba, near Treviso, uh, a very simple uh, project facing uh, south, like the Barquesas of the agricultural places. Um, this uh, colored uh, uh, space, uh, which you see, was a fight uh, with uh, the psycho psychologist uh, who wanted us uh, uh, to divide all the spaces in small parts. In fact, uh, we didn't. Uh, we instead built uh, a, what we call the red room without uh, the roof because uh, nearby there's the park uh, of uh, uh, the river where the um, beautiful birds are passing through but, and the kids uh, are used to just, these are kids from zero to six, so they're very small. They are sit usually on the ground, which is a soft ground. Um, and if you have uh, a place uh, which is uh, all uh, red or, or one color, you are uh, in some way attracted from f to look at what is uh, changing, which is the sky, the, um, the birds, uh, and uh, um, what happens above you. The idea of intervisibility, the fact that uh, children uh, uh, are not uh, uh, just taught uh, top down, but they learn a lot from each other. So there is a sequence of spaces, this was the cover of an old abitare, uh, where the teachers uh, need to make an effort, you see that the, 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 the window is uh, just low, to put themselves to understand the world uh, of the kids. And uh, here, the cost of this school is 926 uh, euros, 926 euros per square meters. Uh, we had no money to make double walls. It's just a concrete, uh, double concrete structure and a concrete structure inside. Uh, but uh, as you see, there are different colors and we invented a code for which the kids could move independently inside the space uh, without being uh, uh, taken around by the teachers. Another color um, no node inside the territory. Here we are uh, near uh, Campo Baeza Primary School uh, for the Ponzano factories. That school is a uh, a closed school, we decided to open it totally uh, towards outside and uh, uh, to have this intervisibility through all the spaces so you can see a sequence of activities going uh, uh, ahead inside. We work with the kids. We don't usually explain the projects to their parents but invent instead some theater plays or uh, stories uh, that we tell to the kids and then they tell their stories to the mom and dads. This means that we, if we are able to speak simply and to make ourselves understood by the kids, maybe that's simple for everybody. So Ponzano Primary School uh, was, uh, we borrowed uh, uh, Lewis Carroll, Alex, and uh, the White Rabbit. Uh, so the kids were already used to the, um, to the story, to the, to the characters, uh, sorry. Uh, Roberta Gorni designed uh, uh, these beautiful pictures. Uh, she, is, uh, she writes uh, children books. 
Um, and uh, we put some topics. I'm, I'm not telling you the whole of the topics, but one important one was that that is a part of the territory. And so the white rabbit sows uh, as if it was, uh, you know, the pillars were sowing the school in the territory. Another topic was the intervisibility. Uh, where you can always uh, see what happens inside, where you have threshold in order to have some outside spaces uh, which allow you special activities, uh, also if it's raining in this arcade. You have, um, you know, a direct connection with uh, the garden, especially for the, this is a primary school, for the six uh, and the first two years of the primary school. And we designed what we call the classroom without walls. Uh, it's opaque until uh, 120 centimeters, and then it's glazed in order that when you are sitting, you pay attention to your teacher. But when you are standing, you can see what's moving and what's going on. And uh, they become also the windows where to show the um, works that you do inside the class. As you know, everybody is proud to show the most beautiful things they do. All is, uh, so this is a, a diagram which shows intervisibility, all is happening around a center, um, a, a main courtyard um, where all the public spaces face. So when you enter, there's a larger corridor which is allows maybe exhibitions or whatever. Then here is uh, the uh, dug inside the ground uh, uh, gymnasium, which you can see when you enter without disturbing it from, uh, from the entrance. Here is the canteen, and above here is uh, uh, the library. Um, there is also another um, layout which allows uh, to use uh, this part of the school uh, without uh, so closing this part. So the gymnasium and this public place, which could be the canteen, can be used after the school hours by the community without using the whole school. And here are some pictures of the courtyard. Um, if you saw these uh, benches, uh, which uh, are these, uh, are movable, and they can be used to invent special, very simply, I mean, the kids themselves can take them in another place and invent a different way of organizing uh, the space. And everything which happens is a kind of a stage, right? Where people are looking and uh, working or running or doing many things uh, as a real uh, uh, community. This is the underground gymnasium. These are the art labs, uh, which have an outside space on the roof uh, to exhibit the work. Uh, this uh, uh, building has also a natural uh, uh, ventilation preheated uh, through a system which uh, uh, draws uh, the air inside the ground. It arrives to 14 degrees centigrade and then it's uh, taken directly inside the glasses and then uh, taken away from uh, chimneys on the roof. That was very difficult to explain the kids, right? But through Alex and the White Rabbit, we think uh, they might understand that sustainability can be also a natural and not only a technological addition to buildings. So, I, I, I mean, sustainability is something which I give uh, of default and I'm not going to explain you that this school has geothermy and photovoltaics and all that stuff, right? Because it's given. But you can see that these uh, chimneys on the roof, which is a green roof uh, um, above. And this uh, is the last project. Uh, I think it's very new. Uh, the school was just opened. It's in Chiarano, near uh, um, Treviso. Another uh, colored node uh, in, uh, in the city of the sprawl. 
Um, uh, again, uh, very similar topics to the previous one, uh, the intervisibility and the class uh, uh, with uh, no walls. But here the school was really smaller, so we didn't have uh, the money and the space uh, to do a courtyard inside. So we had to invent another type of center, which was to be open anyway to the community. So we invented uh, this uh, slightly underground uh, library, which has become, uh, thankfully to the uh, acceptance of, uh, of the administration, uh, the children library of the city, of the small city of Chiarano. And above uh, is uh, a, a botanic garden to allow the kids uh, for experimentation, which gives light uh, to this uh, covered square and square, which is uh, the entrance uh, uh, of the school. So um, this is uh, the, uh, this is a square in fact, right? Uh, no corridors because all the classes on this side face uh, to this big entrance hall with a library inside. A lot of light, the canteen, which is looking uh, at that, um, the botanic garden on the top, it's raining here. The possibility of having always the perception that something is happening in section. A suspended roof uh, of mood made structure uh, which allows uh, the first floor circulation and connection. And again, you feel that you are always uh, connected uh, with uh, the outside. The classrooms are very similar to those I explained before. And you have this idea of very, a lot of things happening and uh, uh, around you at the same moment. So being part uh, of uh, a community. In the cultural, in the um, industrial districts in the Veneto region, the interchange of uh, uh, technology happens naturally in the cafes, in this uh, condition of uh, uh, moments of uh, connection. So we think that a school can be considered a cultural district in some way. This is the canteen, which can be used also for different purposes because it's in connection. If you close the classes, you can just use this space for the community itself. This is a picture taken from inside the canteen towards the rest of the space. The, there are nine holes which give direct light to the, to the roof windows, which give direct light to the library. This is a view of the outside from one of the classes, another one. In the different conditions of the outside, in some cases you have the trees just there and in another place you have uh, a big uh, uh, landscape, a broad landscape uh, uh, on you. This is the bridge. some of the pictures. So, this is exactly what you see at the entrance. There's another exit uh, on the, for the garden on the opposite side. This is uh, uh, the gate uh, for uh, the canteen and the service gate, while the main gate is uh, this double space, uh, uh, double height uh, uh, entrance. Again, the color. And I would like to leave you with this uh, picture. We go back to Venice. This is a very, very sensual object, in our opinion. It's a forcola. And uh, it is uh, a, an object uh, uh, which uh, uh, allows, uh, in some way, the ore is not linked to the forcola. And this is necessary in Venice. Uh, because uh, uh, the canals are very narrow and sometimes you, with the fog you don't see the boat uh, in front of you, so you have to stop quickly or to turn uh, quickly. And this is allowed only if you are able to move the oar how you want. 
So this is, uh, this object is an adapter, is the adapter to allow you circulate uh, in this complexity. And this is uh, how we would like to continue working in architecture, doing uh, some objects, some adapters, uh, which allow you to put yourself uh, in contact with the context. Thank you. <laughs>